Good morning, everyone. This is Wednesday, September the 27th. I've got a good story for you this morning. I just got up and it was so gloomy and rainy and I could hear the thunder and I said, boy, this is going to be a great day. What will I do today? Same thing I do every day. Get up, drink my juice, eat my little sausage biscuit that Jimmy Dean prepares for me in the mornings. Well, he's made them and I just put them in the oven and heat them up. You know how that goes. So, <clears throat> I've got a little story I wanted to tell you for a long time, but I was afraid I might step on somebody's toes. And I don't mean to do that at all. This is just a story about one person. So don't take offense to how I tell this story. But I think you'll like it. Now, I'm going to read it to you. It's from this book right here. Hold it, Lord, hold it. I decided I could read it <clears throat> and it would work better than if I try to tell it because I always forget something when I start telling a story. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat. I guess you can see I'm still in my robe this morning, but I did go in and brush my hair back so it didn't look like a rooster's tail. And I'm going to read this story to you, and you listen closely and take it for what it's worth. I hope this little, I'm using a little small uh, iPad rather than using a book because the print's a whole lot bigger, if you can see. It's easier for me to read. So listen closely and enjoy. Get you something to drink first. I prefer you get comfortable. And this story is entitled, let me get the lighting so I don't have so much glare on my pretty red glasses. The title of this story is, My Son is Now an Attorney. You're gonna like it. Every mother dreams of the day when her child playing in the dirt will grow up and have a prestigious job in the community. Of course, she may be waiting for him to become a famous attorney like Alan Dershowitz or Richard Scruggs. I just threw his name in because I knew you wouldn't know who he was, but his net worth is $1.7 billion. That's impressive. Don't dream too high, though. I have news for you. By the time the young graduate has paid off his student loan and can make his own down payment on a house, you will be making reservations at the nearest retirement home. Now, please don't take offense to my remarks. Just remember, it takes all kinds to make the world go round, and we've seen the best of them and the worst of them. This is only one of them. My sister and I have the same birthday, and her son celebrates his birthday the following day, we decided to kill three birds with one stone by celebra celebrating together at a well-known restaurant at a little country inn. It would be my first time to go there. My brother-in-law, a quiet, well-mannered man, was with us. I remember that evening very well. This young man had just graduated from law school and was getting ready to set the world on fire, so he thought. My sister was on cloud nine. Her son had finally graduated and she had aspirations of a successful future for him, 
The first thing he did was run down to the framing shop to have his diploma placed in a nice black frame for the wall of his new office and business cards printed with the addition of Esquire next to his name while his mother went to the nearest men's clothier to buy him a three-piece pinstripe suit which she thought he needed when he had to appear in court. It never occurred to her that most of his early clients and onlookers would probably have been arrested for drunk driving, bootlegging, or beating their wives. They de would definitely be impressed by her son's three-piece pinstripe suit. Actually, all they wanted was to stay out of jail. My sister would still be paying her son's bills until he could get on his feet. I knew that that might take a few years because, as his dad said, he's lazy. There was no doubt Mama was quite proud of the son's accomplishments so far and the prestigious position he had just acquired. To get his start, he had been taken under the wing of one of the older, more established, and successful attorneys known all around town. I'm going to call my nephew, Benny. I never cared much for De Benny, and I suppose I should blame that on his mother. He could never do anything wrong, but in my opinion, he was an unlikable, snotty-nosed, spoiled brat who considered himself above everyone else. Just my opinion. He was wearing a birthday present that evening, given to him by his new law partner, and kept bragging about how much it cost. Forty dollars. In that day, which was about 40 years ago, in that day and time, forty dollars was quite a sum for such a small item, and Benny just couldn't quit talking about the price paid for the necktie. Forty dollars. I was getting a little frustrated with his continual bragging, so I mentioned in my gentlest manner, you can go to Hammer's and get one that looks just like it for two ninety nine. Well, that didn't sit well with Benny. Hammer's was the local discount store where everybody from hither and yon traded if they wanted a bargain. The store sold mostly overstock items of any kind including neckties. I had learned how to spot a good bargain and had bought my fair share of things from designer sheets, new fiesta wear, to 99 cent bloomers. I even bought 13 lace and linen tablecloths at one time, overstock items from Bloomingdale's in New York. Now that's big stuff. That was one of my best buys. I gave away several of the tablecloths, and I'm still waiting for an occasion to show and tell the rest of my beautiful tablecloths. I had just insulted Benny to the hilt with my comment about Hammer's 2 99 neckties, you better believe. I was aware of it but didn't really care. Benny responded to my remark by saying, you are the most uncouth person I have ever met. I wasn't sure if he had just paid me a compliment or if I should be insulted. I looked at Benny's dad and his face was turning a glowing red. I answered the young graduate, since you are the one bragging about your new tie, 
I'm just giving you my opinion, and that is, if I had paid $40 for a tie that looked like that, I'd wear the price tag on the outside where everybody could see that it cost $40. I might add that we had yet to be seated in the restaurant. My comment and his response put a damper on the birthday dinner. I figured I'd better go home and check my synonym finder to see the true meaning of the word uncouth. I figured this young man's manner could use a little refinement as well. I've learned to mind my manners a little better since then, especially when I took a job working for an attorney. He happened to be one who hated his job and it was an effort to come to work before noon each day. He plainly said he hated being a lawyer, but that was all he knew how to do. And in my opinion, he didn't do it that well. Although he had a good personality, was very smart and had a photographic memory. He would walk through the door in his plaid shirt, jean, and Colhan loafers, and if he had to go to court that day, <clears throat> he reached for the solid-colored sport coat and tie hanging on his coat rack that matched everything, and off he went to represent his client in court. He had long ago outgrown the three-piece suit his mama prob probably bought to impress his constituent after he graduated from law school and was becoming a successful attorney. One of my favorite stories told by the attorney, my boss, was the time he was in court representing a lady client in a divorce settlement. The lady was about 70, showing her age well, with salt and pepper gray hair. She took the stand, and one of the first questions, as you know, the attorney always asks in a divorce court is, are you now pregnant? The lady took a deep breath, pointed her finger at my boss, who was her attorney, and said in a very emphatic voice, young man, I would think with all that education you got to become a lawyer, that one of the things you would have learned by now is that when a woman reaches my age, them body parts don't work anymore. The opposing attorney quickly covered his mouth with his hand while the ju judge whirled his chair around where no one could see him laughing and his chair rattling as it shook. It took a number of years before Benny outgrew his first high school law partner, Mr. Puckett. The last I heard, the old man in his early 90s had been arrested for assault in a fender bender accident. He was spending a little time in jail and making the headlines of the local newspaper. Yes, his name made the headlines. My, how time flies. I haven't seen Benny in years, and I suppose Benny is now retired or nearing retirement, but I sometimes wonder if he still has that $40 necktie that I made the uncouth remark about. Now, folks, that story is in this book, Hold it, Lord, hold it. There are more good stories. If you would like to read them, you can order the books from Amazon. See the one next to it? 
wait till you hear this one. That was my first book. And I think you would enjoy it too. They're all short stories. They're all true stories. To me, they're the best kind. So, here I am in my robe. I just had my Jimmy Dean sausage biscuit, drinking a little juice in my antique glass. This is my glasses from World War II, early 1940s. And I've got a whole bunch of them, just love these glasses. Sun coming out now. I went to Kroger yesterday and got a few things in them. I'm preparing a couple of recipes in a few days. Now, don't get anxious. Don't get excited because you know me. The effort that I put into it may or may not be successful. I'm not your gourmet cook. I'm not the barefoot contessa. I'm not Martha Stewart. I'm not that Rachel Ray. And there's another one I could name, but I'm not going to because that'd be good advertising for her. And I want the advertising for me. So, I'm the lady with the glitzy glasses. You can call me that if you want to, rather than Granny Chit Chat Granny Pat. Just call me the lady with the glitzy glasses. I get lots of compliments on my glasses. That's a hint to you. If you want people to notice you, go out and buy you some glasses like this. They'll notice. And they're really good about complimenting you. Everybody likes them. So, this video is shorter than most of them I do. I was beginning to think I'm making my stories too long. I've been told I should shorten my stories. But then I read your comments. And what do you say? I like the long story best. Oh, you can't win for losing, can you? No, this is not one of my robes that I got at Goodwill. I showed you those robes. This is one I paid a whole lot of money for at Dillard's. And it's just like the blue one I got at Goodwill for $1.99. That's a hint to you. Don't pass up these bargains when you see them. I'm gonna get dressed. I might go out today, I don't know, but you know the thing I need to do is pick up a few things sitting around in the floor that I haven't found a place to put. I think I could rent a warehouse and wouldn't take me long to fill it up. Now I've got a little problem and I'm gonna mention it to you. And I don't expect you to know the answer, but everybody keeps telling me about monetizing, that I should be getting ads on my channel. But I haven't seen any ads. Those ads will make money for me. And people keep saying, you need to be making money. Well, I'll go along with that. But I don't know how, and I've tried to look it up, and I don't understand what those people are saying, and they talk so fast that I can't keep up with what they're saying. My brain is not that that open. I have to follow the words slowly to absorb what they're trying to teach me. So that doesn't work. You got any good ideas for getting me monetized so that I'll make money? I'll sure be glad to take your advice. So, I know there are lots of things on, on uh, 
YouTube, but I don't understand what they're telling me. I need somebody to point it out to me and show me how to do it. Because one of these days, I'm going to be making a lot of money like those people who do those cooking shows. Now, I'll never do a cooking show because I'm not that good a cook. It's not my thing. Telling stories is my thing. I want to just tell you the short stories. The things that register in your mind. My sisters and my brother, they don't understand how I remember so many things. I think we all remember. We just haven't put it to the test. You can pick up on any little thing that you did when you were young and you can make a story out of it because there is a story. I remember when my brother sat on the front porch with us talking and of course being younger than all of his older sisters he didn't have anything to do with them. He was off playing next door with Billy and Donald Ray. And he would tell about watching their dad repair a, mo a boat motor. He was a mechanic. He could repair anything. And I remember him telling one story, and I don't think he gave any thought to it, but I... If you could hear him tell it, it is a hilarious story. He was watching the man repairing the motor. He goes in the house. He gets a big old wash tub. You know the kind of galvanized wash tub the women used in doing their laundry. He brought it out and he got the water hose and he filled that tub up with water and he set the motor down in the tub and pulled the rope or whatever you do and got the motor going. My brother said, I watched him running that motor in that big tub of water and all I could think was how is he going to keep that tub behind the boat when he goes out on the lake? That's not exactly the words he used, but you get the idea. The motor was in the tub. And he couldn't figure how he's going to keep that motor in that tub when he took it out on the lake. That's a story in itself. It's simple. But it was a sign of the times. And there's nothing better than your old time story. So that's all I'm going to say about that. You've got a story to tell. Make sure you tell it. Write it down. Always write it down. Because there are parts of these stories we forget over time. If you've got a son that's a young attorney or graduating from law school. Remember my story about my nephew? I think it's hilarious. $40 tie. You could go to Hammer and get one just like it for $2.99. Thank you for watching. And let this be one of your fun stories, okay?